On stay on silos, you plenty an active expression to go play. And I yeah. When I first arrived here in the predecessor school, our students would say, mm, I go to such and such. And now what we actually get is head held high. They are very proud to be here. They know that they are privileged to be here, but they also know they are part of making this school what it is, which is a very, very good school. Any school is only as good as what goes on in the classroom, and you can have the best building in the world. But if it doesn't match up with what goes on in the classroom, then it's a kind of a pointless exercise. Showing the pupils that beyond the gates of the school, beyond Accrington, beyond East Lancashire, that actually they can aspire to be whatever they want to be. Um, growing that within a, quite a secular town in the north, which has issues with its own regeneration, um, was a real tough task. The aspirations of an academy pupil now compared to four or five years ago is unrecognisable. And you only have to look at our destination data, the children that go on to university, the children that leave us or don't leave us as the case is now, and you'll see a completely different student body. They know what they want, but more importantly, they know how to get what they want. When I first came to the school, people said, you know, it's a highly deprived area. There's only so much we can do, but we will do better. Now they don't say that anymore. They say, we can do as well as anybody else, and we will be able to do so. The results in the Academy have changed quite dramatically over the last couple of years. We've moved from 33% uh, up to what will be, we okay. hope, 61% five ACCs, including English and Maths this year. Our six form results are in the top 3% value added across the country. The fact that the, the, the large majority of teachers are still the original ones that were here when we moved to an academy highlights that you know, actually what we've been doing has been raising aspirations of not just the students but of the teachers' expectations of students. I'm going to show you the questions that I wrote there okay? and I'm going to hide my answers so we can see what we got. We saw interactive whiteboards about four or five years ago and immediately realised that there was the potential to turn around how you engaged students in classrooms. The marriage between the interactive whiteboards, the handsets and classroom teaching and learning can really combine to get a really powerful practice in there that moves students forward. We've got one last little activity to do. I'm going to keep those. When I first saw the whiteboards and handsets in action, I thought it was great, um, and I was really looking forward to using them. Although, if I'm honest, I was probably a little bit daunted by how difficult it could be. Um, but having used them now, I can see that they're actually really simple to use. Okay, girls and boys, I'm just about to open the question up, which is on the whiteboard. You should be able to see it now on your screens. It is simply to order those from shortest to longest in terms of the total number of beats. If for any reason it seems like it won't let you send, that's just because I've said it will, it will only accept the, the correct answer. So you need to rethink it because you must not quite have it right. Then you've got it right, well done. They're not relying on the technology, but it does help sort of make the lessons more interesting and they, they display the, the work and what we want to learn in different ways, which keeps people engaged. Change is always difficult. Um, and I think it makes people insecure. Um, but we have wrapped around the new technologies a plethora of training. And we now find that teachers are as flexible in any bit of technology in the classroom as the students are, even though the students may be a little more competent. Once you start to use it, it's as easy as using any other piece of software. It's intuitive. If you can type 10 questions onto a Word document, then you can type 10 questions into Active Inspire software. Yeah. And you've got your 10 questions set up, ready to go. They've been like teaching each other as well, I think, because one day they wouldn't be that good, and then the next day they'd be like professionals at using them. Yeah. So what we've started doing recently is a, a challenge day or a risk day, where staff are asked to try something new or something different in every single lesson. And we've found that that's had a really big impact because staff will try it period one in the day. By period five, they're really comfortable. I've adapted my teaching methods um, from using active expression by being able to track students much more closely whenever they're on with learning tasks. It does take a bit more preparation at home, but when I'm actually in the classroom, it's very much sort of me just hanging around and letting the kids get on with it, which is absolutely amazing because it's really important that the pupils discover things for themselves. The time that's used at the front end in terms of planning for delivery actually gains huge amounts of benefit in terms of the assessment time and really getting to understand where your students are at the end. It allows you to differentiate more so you can, the kids are actually getting 
questions that are suitable for them. It's changing the way you're teaching and actually making it more efficient. The whiteboard is incredibly useful for anything to do with music in terms of demonstrating things like we use GarageBand and if we didn't have the whiteboard the, the students would always be crowded around one computer um, or it wouldn't be interactive in the same way that it is with the whiteboards we use here. It's not just using the equipment, it's what they do with it that's important and it's how the children react to it and whether they learn better. You're about to see 250 students of a vertical 7 to 11 college come into the assembly hall where they would normally have an assembly and answer a 30 question question set on active expression about all aspects of academy life something that we do every term with all of our students 11 to 18. The main drivers of student voice is the ability for students to feel that they are part of this academy. Remember that the survey is confidential so please answer your questions as honestly as possible, please. Every time that Ofsted come and triangulate with our students and sit down, one of the strongest things that comes through from our students is that they are listened to and that what they say has helped change and shape this academy both now and in the future. It gives you such a wealth of information to inform your planning, but it also gives you a chance to find out whether the children actually see it working on the ground. And if they don't, we can act on it straight away, which I think is the mark of a good school. As soon as you've finished answering your questions, switch your handsets off and put them back in the holders, please, and go back to your form groups. Thank you. So those students did that question set of about 30 questions in under five minutes, which over a 15-minute period in assembly, we probably could stretch that to up to 70 questions if we needed to, according to things which we want to find out within the academy. I like how we do them assemblies because it shows they do care and they do want to know how we feel and ways to improve different things. You don't feel as insecure because you know someone's there for you and, like you know that you don't have to say it because you can write down what you feel. When you care for it, you sort of want to kind of stay where you are and that's kind of why I wanted to stay at Six One really because I thought that they do generally care about each and every person and not just like generically. My favourite thing is the whiteboard because you can do more group work and, and more interactive stuff. I love the active expressions because they're like anonymous, so you don't have to be worried about what you're saying. You can actually have your opinion. I like the whiteboards because it could help you with your confidence. Like you could be doing a group discussion, and you could like go up to the board and show what what you sh what you want. I always just thought it was quite nifty and quite cool and quite modern using them. And then they they sort of introduced second model, and it's like a blackberry keyboard, so it's easier to type than what it was initially. This is how students are used to communicating. So obviously, you don't need me to tell you that students like texting or communicating on Blackberry or Facebook so they're quite used to using this kind of technology and it engages them because it's so personalised they haven't got to wait for the rest of the class. It helps the students know where they're up to and it's stupid giving the students a paper test and them not knowing the answer for a week. Well done to Jenna's group, Jessie's group, Chloe's group and Joel's group who are all on to step four, well done. All these people in the dark are purple so Jenna and Jess are doing really, really well. But I just need to go and catch up with um, Tasha's group because they're just a tiny little bit behind. Whenever you do any kind of questioning with any kind of kid and it's an oral questioning so it's a questioning session, you're only going to hit a small percentage of the kids because of time restrictions more than anything else. I really like the self-paced learning feature of the um, handsets which makes sure that instead of me controlling the class to just sort of doing one question at a time, it's always meant that the, the class can progress at their own pace, meaning that the, the top students can get ahead of everyone else and get onto more difficult questions, while perhaps the people struggling with the questions I can identify and t uh, tackle them early on. You will also see on your desk a steps to success sheet that looks just like this. Step one is to write a four beat rhythm for your A section and repeat it in every bar of the top and bottom A section. Something I often do is have you know the stream of the results up on the board as we're doing the task so each pupil can see where they're up to. It's kind of a race for some of them in some respects. Well done Francesca, just on to level two, good job. The good thing is each pupil in the room is getting on with something themselves so you've got that time to go and see Luke who's sat in the corner struggling with it by himself. Sometimes if you're not so good at a subject you feel maybe like embarrassed because everyone else is good, but the teacher knows and he or she could like come to you and say, I've realised you're struggling, do you need any like support? Everybody learns more 
those that are, may have been behind at one moment catch up, those that weren't behind go even further. I think my mum really does like it because she came here before it was sort of all refurbished and when she comes in she's always really surprised at the changes that have been made and how different it looks and the attitude that's changed sort of as I've gone up through the years so I think she really does appreciate it. It's boosted my confidence because there's loads to do and we're getting as many GCSEs as we can to go on to what we want to do in the future. Before I like, started school I set goals to myself and I've accomplished them and accomplished other things what I've set in life so I think they're proud. The children's learning belongs to the parents too, so we have to engage the parents and the primary schools as well. So uh, I, it's very important to me, but it's also important to me to show other schools in other areas what can be achieved. We recently met with a group of parents from who were just about to leave us in sixth form onto year 13. And one of the things that got fed back from parent was to say, this school has really got to understand my child and has catered for them over the last couple of years. And I think that's a great testimony to what we're trying to do. I think when a parent comes to me at parents' evening and says, thank God I got my son or daughter into the academy because now it means that their brothers and sisters can attend the academy, is the biggest accolade that a school can have. People's perceptions of a community, that the community is dead or the community isn't going anywhere have been completely blown out of the water. We had underperforming children and there's no reason why they should underperform and therefore it's uh, absolutely vital to me. It's probably one of the most enjoyable and important things I've ever done. <laughs>